Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's we're gonna be comparing the Highlander to the Grand Highlander, see what the differences actually are and which one you should buy. Before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Brent Brown Toyota and Orem for giving me some time with both of these vehicles. Both of these are available for sale for the time being. So if you're interested, link to their website in the description down below. Link to my car buying guide in the description down below as well. Let's get into it. So powering the Highlander is a turbocharged 2.4 liter four cylinder that goes to an eight speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 21 around town and then 28 on the highway with power outputs being 265 horsepower and then 310 pound feet of torque. Now the Grand Highlander has the same powertrain with the same power figures. Fuel economy is less though, it's 20 around town and then 26 on the highway so you lose one mile per gallon around town and then two on the highway if you go grand. Before we move forward with this comparison, I do want to mention, if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So take a look at the front style. It's quite a bit different. The Highlander is kind of more rounded off, more kind of like modern crossover in terms of the look. The Grand Highlander, well, everything is more grand. The grill's bigger, more upright. It's a little bit boxier with the design, but notice the elements are the same. They both have headlights and fog lights and chrome trim. I mean, you can see that that's all the same between both of them, so. Yeah, let me know which front end you like best. Now at the Highlander, our turn wheel setup is 235, 55, 20 in the front and over in the rear. The Grand Highlander has slightly bigger tires, so 255, 55, 20 in the front and over in the rear. And you can see there's a lot of similarities. So we both have like unpainted fender flares on them. You've got silver colored wheels on both of them. Notice the mirror caps. Look at that similarity, that's funny. Uh, and then you see the chrome trim around the windows. I mean, this part on both of them looks pretty similar, but notice the Highlander's more rounded off, whereas the Grand Highlander, it's boxier, so you've got a little bit more space there, it looks like. So here's your side profile with the Highlander, and then here's your side profile with the Grand Highlander. So starting with the cargo space in the Grand Highlander, you can see there's quite a bit behind the third row, and then with the third row folded down, there's a lot of space. And then taking a look at the third row, not soft touch, but it looks cool. You can see you've got some cup holders here in the back. You have a little USB port there. The biggest thing I want to focus on is going to be leg room. So you can see it's pretty spacious. And then look at the headroom too. That's also solid in the third row. So you can more comfortably fit like an adult in the third row of the Grand Highlander. And so there's that cargo space. And if we pop over into the Highlander, I notice that behind the third row, there's less space. And then with the third row folded down, there's also a little bit less space. It's not a huge difference, but there is a difference. And then you can see the cup holder set up. And then I want to mention a couple things. So look at the leg room. Not nearly as much leg room there. And then also not as much headroom as well. And so it's just not as comfortable the third row. Like I'd really reserve the third row on the Highlander for kids. And so that's kind of like a big difference between them. And then finishing things up with the rears, you guys can see again the size difference. Look how much taller the Grand Highlander is. And so that really shows you how much more space you get in the cargo area and in the third row of the Grand Highlander compared to the regular Highlander. Now in the second row of the Grand Highlander here, I've got quite a bit of leg room, got a little storage pocket, heated seats, got my own climate zone as well, which is pretty cool. And this is nice on the door panel, a little sunshade here. And then these seats, pretty cool. This is a limited, by the way. So not top of the line, but pretty high up there. And then headroom's really good again with that boxy design. Now this doesn't feel too different in the back of the Highlander for the second row. Again, most of that extra space is third row. You can see you've got the heated seats, climate controls, all that. And then you've got the little sunshade there. And then look at the door panel. I think the door panel might actually be nicer. This is a platinum, but I'm just talking about like the fit and finish and everything. And then you can see with the seats, perforated all down the center. And yeah, I do feel like I have less headroom with this design. Now take a look at the door panel in the front of the Grand Highlander. You can see soft touch here and down below. And look at that trim piece. All of our window controls, you can see with the mirror adjustments and all of that. Blind spot mirroring with the mirrors. And look at these seats. Pretty cool looking, if you ask me. Power adjustments on the side. So you've got more of that trim than the soft touch on the dash. That's actually not soft touch at the very top, interestingly enough. Um, we've got heat steering wheel control and all that. And we'll pop in here. Pop it on. Got this nice digital gauge cluster there. We'll close the door and see how solid it sounds. Pretty good. Got a controls here for the center, volume control, voice command controls. We've got adaptive cruise control and all of that. And then this one, it's got a 360 camera system. So 
Helps out quite a bit with the parking situation. Um, infotainment system, just Toys newer unit. So, easy to use, shortcut bar. You've got analog controls here for the dual zone climate heat and ventilated seats as well. You can see with the vents there for the camera system. And I like this whole like center console storage area. So you've got like the USB right there. I like how it's like a similar cover as what you have with the engine stop start. While this phone charging pad, you get like the shifter, some cup holders. And this is kind of cool with like all the drive mode select. And this one gives you a cool animation with the drive modes. It like drives through. It's kind of fun. Center console is very interesting. Good storage though, overall. And then you've got the little storage above the glove box. Glove box itself is just pretty normal setup. Um, just a regular mirror in this one, and then we do have a panoramic center up top. Now take a look at the door panel in the regular Highlander. A um, little bit nicer material use again. This is the platinum, so it makes sense. I will say just how they've designed this, I think I like that a little bit more than the Grand Highlander. Uh, but anyways, you can see all the controls here, memory seats, blind spot monitoring with the mirrors. You got these fancy front seats here power adjustable. You've got some controls here on the side for like the camera, heat steering wheel and all of that. And we'll just do the door first in this one. See how that... A little bit more hollow compared to the Grand Highlander. The door closing. Fuel low. Cool. But yeah, basically the same digital gauge cluster. You can see very similar setup here on the steering wheel. You even have the 360 camera system. And notice with like the climate control stack, it's very similar with how they've set that up uh, but notice where the wireless phone charging pads it's different and this whole part of the dash is also different the design and then this center stack it's not as open as we have with the grand highlander you can see kind of like this section here and then you got like all the buttons still have the weird sliding center console so that's kind of a carryover with both of them and then this one has camera rear view mirror and then you've got a panoramic center up top now when it comes to pricing, both of these stick are for about $54,000. So you can get a higher end package on the Highlander for the same price as the Grand Highlander with a lower package. Makes sense, bigger vehicle, all that kind of stuff. But anyways, let's sum up this comparison. Talk about visibility before you set off. Visibility over the hood, both the mirrors. And got the rest of the rear. So, <laughs> Highlander, uh, to be honest, the only reason I'm filming this review is because I'm getting my windshield repaired over here at Brent Brown, because they've got people that can do that. And so I was like, you know what, while I'm waiting for 20 minutes, I'll go and review something, and well, it is the Highlander that we are reviewing. And yeah, this is an interesting car. Um, I've reviewed pretty much every single package on the new Grand Highlander, and I reviewed the Lexus TX, as well, I just reviewed that TX500H. And so I, I feel like it's it's a good time to come back to the regular Highlander, the original, and kind of talk about it. So first off, seat comfort's good. It's a comfortable car, ride quality is also good. It's, it's It drives well. Uh, and you know, although, and just like a lot of people, I did like that old V6, even though it wasn't necessarily as punchy as this new turbo four cylinder, you know, just the trust that you have in an engine like that is, you know, exciting to me. And so, yeah, like I said, this, this engine's fine, but V6. And I've noticed a lot of people have been reaching out to me about Highlanders, and they've been saying that uh, they want to go for the V6. They're like, hey, have you seen any V6 Highlanders? And it's like, oh, interesting that that's happening right now. But yeah, it just drives well. So why would this be obsolete? If this car has solid features, it's you know, priced pretty reasonably considering other cars in the market and it drives well and all that. Well, the Grand Highlander. Um, I think that Toyota originally thought that there was two different markets, right? They thought that there was people that wanted a, you know, vehicle like this with a third row where, you know, probably the third row is gonna be folded down most of the time, use the storage, and then maybe they'll occasionally use the third row, whereas the Grand Highlander is gonna be kind of more dedicated third row, right? It's a little bit bigger SUV, so you got more third row space and just more space in general. I think that's what they thought. They thought that, yeah, okay, we'll kind of dive into two different markets. But I think the reality of it is that some of these, these still sell. Because, you know, Toyota for the most part, a lot of their vehicles, is they're still sold out because there's, you know, quite a bit of demand. But these aren't selling as well as the Grand Highlander. Like, the Grand Highlander is sold out. Whereas this, on the other hand, is not. Right? I'm obviously reviewing this one. This one's available for sale. Yeah, this engine really is good. 
Let's talk about visibility here on the Grand Highlander. Should this build over the hood, both the mirrors. And throughout the rest of the rear. And we're just gonna adjust this a little bit. Okay. I was about to leave the Toyota dealership after getting my windshield repaired. And then I noticed there was a Grand Highlander and I said, you know what? I was just talking a bunch of crap on the regular Highlander. Let's do a real side-by-side -side comparison and see if my crap talking is, is real and <laughs> We'll see. So first off, it does feel, it feels so much more open in here. Just like the, the boxy design. I think I think we're gonna see a lot more, I mean, where you kind of are seeing a lot more boxy vehicles come out, you know, the new Santa Fe, the, you know, this Grand Highlander, the Lexus GX, the new Toyota Land Cruiser, uh, the Ford Bronco Sport. Like there's just all these kind of boxy vehicles coming out. Cause people like to have space in their cars. Not feel so cramped, but, I will say right off the bat, it does feel like the engine has to work a little bit harder compared to the regular Highlander. It's a bigger vehicle, makes sense. Ride quality is a little bit better. It's a longer wheelbase, also makes sense. It does, yeah, it does, it's, it handles heavier. So you, you do feel the extra weight. Smooth drive overall. Yeah, I feel like this car does really well with that new iForce Max. I drove that in the Lexus TX recently, the 500H. That that really motivates this quite well. This 2.4 is it's not bad, but it's just a little bit a little bit underpowered for this platform. And I realized in the I, I did a review on the regular Highlander. I realized in that review I said it had 270 horsepower, not 265. Kind of, kind of messed up on that a little bit, but you know, it is what it is. So we'll go around here and then we'll kind of cap things off. But I will say, it drives pretty well. Let's see if that expedition's nope. Yeah, you do, again, you do, you really do feel the weight. It's real. It is real. So, do I still think Grand Highland is better? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it is a little bit more money, but it's just, you get more space, you get it's just, everything seems better with this. Everything seems better with this. Except it feels a little bit less powerful. But I think I think it looks better. I think, like, the door sounded less hollow than the regular Highlander. It seems like it's built a little bit better, in a way. Although I like the door panel on the regular Highlander a little bit more than this door panel. Like, the material, kind of like how it's glued on. It's a weird thing to point out, but... Stuff I notice is someone who reviews cars. So yeah, if I was choosing between the two, I'd go grand. Let me know your thoughts.